Watch Me Work is a play. We're going to do the action together, which means we're going to work together. Most of us here in the lobby are writers, so we're going to write together, or think together, or be together. And then we're going to, that's the action, and then we're going to do the dialogue together, which is you talking to me about your creative process. I know, folks, right. You talking to me about your creative process. So basically, if you try to ask me a question about me, I'll make it about you. Watch me work is about you. Yay. So it's a play, and that we do the action and the dialogue, and then it's also, as you figured out, a meta theatrical free writing class. So it's a it's a writing class basically, and we're going to be talking about your creative process. So any questions you might have about you know, where you are in your process, whether it's writing or dancing or fiddle playing or uh, whatever it is that you do so wonderfully. Uh, we'll be talking about that. Now, if you're out there in the interwebs and you want to tweet us a question, as you often do, Caroline will give us the information. You can um, tweet at us, and our handle is at watchmeworksLP with the hashtag new play. Is that it? Sounds so good. At Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag New Play. And we, have, we have a fabulous we have a fabulous cameraman today whose name I'm spacing on Mike Mark Mark Mike Mike. Okay, I've got it now. Great forever. So Mike is behind the camera, and we're going to work. I mean, I'm feeling in the holiday mood, so I think we should work for 20 minutes. <laughs> um, we'll work for 20 minutes, which gives us which gives us more time to talk. Okay, so I'm going to use this timer. And um, I'm going to write on this typewriter. Oh, yeah, Caroline. So today, um, Caroline took my typewriter to a shop, and the kindly person gave me a new ribbon, and she's going to tell you about the typewriter shop. Uh, compliments of the Gramercy Typewriter Company. Thank you for the new ribbon. It is located on 5th Avenue and 23rd Street. Oh, and he, the, he typed something. He, did he leave you a message? He said, he said, this, oh, it's so lovely. He wrote me like a little note. He said, this is a sample done on this typewriter. New ribbon installed. Remington portable typewriter. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, all right. That puts me in a really good mood. I'm just going to take the paper out because I have things to write. <laughs> So let's start working now.
So that was the uh, action part. Uh, okay, that was the action part, and now we're going to do the dialogue part. So, yeah. Does anybody have any questions, suggestions, answers, prayers? Yes, sir. What's your name? Donnell. D Darnell? Donnell. Donnell? Yes. Hi. Welcome. Um, well, this is uh, great for me because this is, um, I'm currently working on what is my first piece. So oh, this is, it might be helpful, you know, your question. Sure, sure. Um, so this, I'm working on, which is actually my first piece, first official piece, um, venturing as a writer. Um, and while I, I've done some reading to, you know, find a like format or, you know, the formula for creating a piece, I've chosen to take the route of like just kind of going with what comes to mind, and just to get it out, and then to go back and, you know, okay. and I'm just curious as to, you know, is that okay? Are you allowed? Are you allowed? So Donnell, is that his name? Donnell? Donnell, yeah. Donnell mm -hmm. is writing what he calls his first official piece. <laughs> and um, it's, a, it's a play? Am I right? No. no? It's, oh, good. It's actually a, um, it's actually a, a series. A series, like a TV, a TV series. I'm or? writing it. I'm writing it in the format of a web series, but allowing the link for TV cool. series. Cool. Okay, so he's writing like a series. Cool. And he wonders if he's allowed to just <coughs> go ahead and write without, you know, the whole without thing of sure without fleshing out the characters first and sure. Like sure. I had, like the idea has been sitting in my mind and so. Sure. It's been playing in my head as it would play on screen, I guess. Sure. And so sure. I've just been trying to sure. write it down. Sure. Right. So. I, I think you're allowed. Okay. I think you're allowed. I mean, the, the thing is that we all know, right, is that, you know, you're, how, how many, how far are you in it? How many pages? I mean, it's, 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 currently, well, each episode is about uh, 12 to 15 pages. Okay. I'm on the, I'm starting the fifth. So there might come a time on like episode 173, maybe, when you go like, I need to know more about this character. Or I need to know more background about this blah, 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 nuclear fission. I didn't do research on nuclear fission and now it's the centerpiece of my series. So do that, that's when you drop in and do the research. If it works for you, and this is the thing, different ways work for different artists, right? We all have our things. Some people like to spend exactly two months doing research before they launch into their... Some people do thick character bibles, they call them. You know, different things work for different people. And what might be working for you now, you might have to change up on your next project. You see what I mean? So the way you're working now and the way that is working now for you might not work next time around and so you should know don't not not no need to panic or freak out just know that you've kind of gone on to the next level next little, little difficulty we were talking about last week with chris next you know like in, if you game or you've ever known anybody who games like zelda that's what i know about gaming zelda <laughs> it's like Ding! she's on a different level now she has to get the you know now she has to carry things with two hands <laughs> It's my, that's my game experience, but you know what I mean? So suddenly, you know, maybe you have to change up your game a little bit to accommodate the next thing you're working on. So go forward. And I say if it's working, then work it. You know? Yeah, if it's working, it sounds like it's working. So far, I mean. Congratulations, that's great. No sweat. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I'm Daria. Hi, Daria. I'm uh, trying to write a play on uh, like events that have happened, like real events, yeah. not my personal life, but I'm having trouble uh, trying to decide between, because I'm reading a lot of biography about those, like the event, right. and deciding between if I should actually like use that or just use it as an inspiration, 
because I really want to use the actual things that people have said too, but I also want to abstract it. Is there like any way I can find a middle ground between that? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, um, again, it's like what works, you know what I mean? So if you find that the actual historical information, the actual lines that the people say, or the actual, she ate a stick of butter. If that's not working in your play, then don't include it. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you know what I'm saying? So you don't have to be, you know, enslaved to the historical material. So do you think it's fair if I use some of it and just change other parts and still use, like... It, de it depends. It depends. Um, if someone were writing a, a play based on your life, and they said, no, I'm just going to take this thing that Daria said, no, I'm not going to include that. And I'm going to change up such and such, you know what I mean? Then maybe you would have an opinion about that. Hey, wait a minute, I didn't say that, you might say. So, so we would want always the writer, and you'll know, the writer to respect the material, but not to be a slave to it. You know what I mean? You, you, there's, a, there's a line. So you want to kind of be able to do your own thing and tell your version of the story. You know, um, you don't have to quote them word for word. And it, it really depends. You don't want to put, you know, cram words into the mouth of a character in order to prove your point. Because if that's what you're doing, then you should write something else. I really, that's my, but that's my belief. You know, some people do that all the time, you know. So it really, really depends. You're going to have to listen. Listen to the actual historical character. They were a living person, correct? Okay. So they were a living person that lived a long time ago, or? Like the 60s. Okay, that was a long time ago. They lived a long time ago in the 60s, back when people used typewriters. And all the phones had wires on them. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that was a long time ago. No one will ever remember that. No, but you know, you want to be respectful. So listen to them, even if they're not living anymore. Treat them as if they're living and be respectful of them. And have fun, have fun. Thanks, thanks, Dory. Anybody else? Yeah, remind me of your name. Ale. Ale, yeah. yeah. So last time I was here, you told me to buy in the index cards in the binder clip, and I did. Oh. And it helped a lot. So now I have a rough draft of the play, getting middle and end. Awesome. Okay. So now I think you <laughs> might know what you're talking about. Yeah, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Um, do you have any tricks for it or yeah, yeah. ideas for editing? Like, editing? Yeah. Like you're done. You're, you've done a draft. This is amazing. Like last draft. You're amazing. Yeah. Last week she was like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, go out and buy some index cards. She's like, I bought the index cards. Now I've written a draft. Now what? I stayed up like all night. <laughs> this is amazing. This is miraculous. Wow. So editing? Hmm. God, so any tricks for editing? Tricks, tricks, tricks. I think that um, one of the things I personally do best is edit my own work. You know, writing is, um, but editing I can really edit. So maybe you could try, and I know you stayed up all night and you wrote it this week and it's very precious, you know, I mean it's very close to your heart. You know, it's like the baby is only like, two days old, you know, you still have all those like, oh, I love you, I love you more than myself. Okay, but what you need, I'm a mom, I talk about this, it's okay. So what you need to do though, perhaps, is create some distance from it. I know, it's like a romance. Yeah, so you can take, you have it printed out? Okay, do you have, uh, you can go to Staples though. Did you, where'd you get the index cards? At, at Walgreens? So maybe they have envelopes, too. I mean, Walgreens might be your spot, you know. So go check out Walgreens. See if they have an envelope that's large enough to fit the manuscript. Okay? Or if they don't go to Staples, that's a magical spot, Staples. That one on Broadway, it's magical. Yeah. So you go there, you buy an envelope, and you put it in the envelope, and you close it up, and you maybe write something. Oh, before you close it, write yourself a note like, this is a wonderful, wonderful piece of work. Congratulations. Put it in there too. And then close it up for like a week. 
and go do something else, write something else, whatever, get some more index cards, and then come back to it and read it out loud. Do you have time in your home where you can be alone? Great. Read it out loud in your apartment or room or whatever, standing up. Okay? All the way through. You don't have to read it fast, but just read it all the way through, standing up. Right? And you'll start to hear what needs to change. Okay? Because of your flow, you had a flow question before. So I don't want you to sit down and start working on it today. That's stuck, right? That's like... <laughs> you want to create space and flow. So let it cool off a little bit. Then read it out loud standing up. And start and with a, and then read it out loud. Don't no pen in your hand or anything. And then get a pen in your hand, read it again, and start adding stuff. But work, try to see if you can work standing up for the first two read throughs. And then you can sit down. It's like I just made that up. I don't know. It might work. It's gonna work great. It's gonna work great. I do it all the time. See? I do. I, I think I think really well standing up. Good luck. And I, I won't see you hopefully until February if you're in February, you know. So we'll, we'll check on it then. Yes, Logan. Hi, Logan. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so glad you're here. Logan's a great director, and we met through a, a thing at NYU. So I put in a good word for you, by the way. Do you know what I mean? Okay, good. <laughs> you know what I mean. if I got this right. So Logan has a project she's working on with the writer, and one of the characters in the project is a nun, or she could be, she, the character's nun. 1920s nun. So she, okay, so for all intents and purposes, let's just pretend she's an astronaut. So your question is, how do I approach the astronaut and get to know the day-to-day, -day, an astronaut in the 1960s, which was so far away. So, histor history. No, this is good. An astronaut in the 1960s. So how do I approach an astronaut in the 1960s and get to know, most of them, all of them were, most of them were guys, how do I get to know his day-to-day, -day, right? So I can, so my material that I write can be authentic, real? Are yeah, right. The events are created. The data. Okay. So, but we'll say an astronaut in the 1960s, because the answer might be the same. Because a nun in the 1920s is probably not alive. Where is she? A nun. Where is she? Where is she living? In Harlem. So, in, okay. So she's probably not alive. Can we guess? And she's African American, okay, but she's probably not alive. And the life of a, a sister in the 1920s, a sister, a nun in the 1920s, a sister, sister, is probably not the same as the life of a nun now. Especially when the Pope, Pope Francis just came down with this like, nuns are okay. I mean, hippie. Yeah, thanks. You know, but you know, so so the because the church, the Catholic Church, is is very different now. So. Just like the life of an astronaut in the 1960s is not the life of an astronaut now, right? So, 
do some research, and punt. That's a long answer to a short question, but right? Do your research and then punt, kick the ball. You know, and if you want to go talk to real nuns who live in Harlem, great, but I think that's creating, uh, I think that's a less, than necess less necessary than you might think to create a, a believable, authentic character. If there were a nun alive, you know, if there were a nun in the 2014 to live in Harlem, then yeah, then yeah, it, it, it's, I think you can do some research and punt. Punt meaning, you know, we're not close, you know, football. You know. I know, sometimes I want to say ox sometimes. I know, but you say oaks. And it's your name. Yeah, I changed it to that, so I'm always very particular about that. Really? And what was it before? It was, uh, it was oaks is good. I like oaks. I like oaks, because you're kind of like an oak. Oh, really? <coughs> yeah. I have a lot of that with you. Um, I, I wanted to ask about the, the rewriting process. Yes. I, I don't know if I have one. I mean, I do it obviously all the yeah, you time. Do. I do. You do. But, but, but I, I, I guess when I when I know that like my job is to take something and go deeper right. into something or someone, I can get kind of like paralyzed. Like I don't, I don't know. Like, is there another way to think about that? Because I hear that a lot from people. Like, oh, I love this. We should go deeper. And I think go deeper. Like, is there another way for me to hear a book deeper and translate that to the title? Do you know what I mean? That's great. I know, I know, I know the name. So, so Oaks is asking a question. So he, he writes brilliantly and beautifully and funnily. Funnily? Humor, whatever. Funnily. And, and um, sometimes when he's rewriting <laughs> and he hears um, the directive go deeper, um, it's like, what, WTF, what are they talking about? Right, so how to, how, it's, it's, some, it's how to make a note work for you, right? I mean, how to make a note, and, and probably a smart note, in language that we do speak, but it doesn't make any sense to you. So how to make it work for you. So go deeper. Um, You have to find a way to tra to translate those words so they're going to work for you. So what about like, um, what does that character really, really, really want? You know? What does he want, for example, what does he want more than anything? I'm thinking of like actor house, right? What does he want more than anything, you know? What does she really, really want? And I'll, you know, tell me about the ghost. A note that I kept giving you last semester. What does the ghost want? Really, 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 right? So to connect it with desire, right? And, I mean, if you're like, if you're dating, for example, and you have your your date or your 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 significant other says, well, <laughs> forget that. Um, but you want to you want to get deeper into the, the relationship, right? You want to get specific. I know. It's holiday time. Uh, you want to get specific about what you really, really, really want, right? So you want to ask your characters, and you can have a conversation with your characters. What do you really, really want? What are you doing here? You know, what, I mean? what are you doing? What are you actually doing? We talked about like last week, doing things and talking. Sometimes is not enough of an answer. Meaning, if you say, if your character says, "I'm just talking." What are you doing? I'm making pancakes. Interesting. Oh, I can watch that. You know what I mean? I'm learning how to flip a pizza because my dad says that's the only job I'm going to get when I graduate. So I'm going to flip pizza. Or whatever. I'm just, you know, and that I'm flipping a pizza. I'm, you know, whatever. I'm practicing my, my one legged balance pose because someone told me that was going to help me. You know, whatever. You know, what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing on stage, right? So those are ways that you can go deeper. You want to find, when people say go deeper, your, your question is, where can I dig? You want to dig in. And desire, what a character wants, is a great way to dig.
their guts, through their body is a great way to dig. What are they doing? You know, I love when characters are actually doing things. Sewing, flossing, dancing, practicing a dance step over and over because they want to win a competition. Tell me. See? Does that help? So those are little easy little things. See? Come on. Anytime. Next semester I'll see you. It'll be fun. Anybody else? Nobody can be. Yes. Um, what, I'm also having trouble, um, putting, I like writing fun and things like you, I like putting humor into my work, but yes. if the subject is really a sad thing, yes. how do you find the balance between humor and, like, really horrific events? Maybe you don't. Um, uh, I, 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 I guess... You just tell it like it is. You see, when you say something's really sad, you've kind of decided what it is, right? But what about just telling me the sequence of events? And instead of trying to maybe put humor in something, allow the events to unfold as you are seeing them in your mind's eye. You see, I mean, I... I I have an example, but I'm not going to give it because it involves a, a dear friend who has had a hard thing happen recently. But, you know, in the middle of really horrible things, there's something kind of maybe goofy going on on the sidelines. That if you label it sad event, then you're not going to see the goofy little thing going on on the sidelines. But if you just label it, this is what happened today, then you're going to see that little thing. It's going to come up because it's there. Um, you know? Or maybe it's not, and that's okay too, to have a sad, a series of sad events. This, uh, you know, so you have to, of course, sort of, you have to expand your, your gaze, you know, do you, you understand what I'm saying? You have to listen for everything that happens in the room, and not just the sad events, right? Um, yeah. So that's a good question. They're all good questions. Anybody else? No? No? That's a goal. I know. So, so it's, it's going to be, you know, it's coming to the end of the year, which means it's coming to the beginning of another year. And um, does anybody have any goals or things that they want <laughs> Things that they want to accomplish. And it's, it's fun to think about, you know, effective ways to get shit done. Because I realized at the end of this year, I mean, I think I realized a long time ago, but really at the end of this year, that I'm really good at getting shit done. And it's kind of like, whoa, wow, look at all the stuff I got done. So um, it's fun to talk to people about getting stuff done, especially if it's maybe something that you've been trying to do for a long time. And setting up a, a way to um, get things done. Any questions on that subject? Or you're all like, like, you, anybody have something they really want to do for next year, you know? And he's thinking, how the heck am I going to accomplish that? No? No? Yeah, Carol. that she has adapted into a play, and she's wondering, oh, maybe it's a musical, maybe they're, and because she's also writing songs, which is cool, which is, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, you are, you're really good at getting stuff done too, and it sounds like you're just continuing to put the time in, and not really worrying about where it's going. But, or where it's coming from. Oh, oh, that's very good, or where it's coming from, well said, that's really smart, yeah. They're just going with it, right? Yeah, that's good. That's really smart. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. I'm going to run my first marathon in the fall. You're going to run the, your first marathon in the fall? Yeah. Yay! Yeah. <coughs> yeah, oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And I'm heading back to school uh, in January. And you're heading back to school in January. Congratulations. First time in 23 years. Right on. Good for you. You're not moving. 
moving to Portland, are you? Good, good, good. Jay's niece. Oh, yeah. Jay's niece. Jay's niece. Oh, somebody. Somebody lives there. Somebody. 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 Cool. Congratulations. Those are huge things. When is the marathon? When? Yes. It's in the fall. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. So you have, um, you have, uh, you are, you're already a runner, yes? yes? Yes. Yes. And so you have a whole plan to do that. You do. Because there are lots of great training plans to, to right. run with us. Uh -huh. And a part of that, I mean, I'm going back to school to become a physical trainer. Oh, cool. So it's oh, cool. all interrelated. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Congratulations. Thank you. That's really great. Yes, going to school is a great way to help you accomplish really big things. Running a marathon. I know Alana's running a marathon next year, too. Yeah, she's it's running hard. several, it's but hard. yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I just wave. <laughs> no, I used to run, run long distance, but that was a long time ago. Anybody else? Are we done? Or anybody else have a burning, itching? Oh, darn, I wish I wish I asked that question. Now she's gone, and I won't see her till February. I know. Under the Radar, the fabulous Under the Radar Festival is going to be in the public theater and all over the city, but mostly in the public theater in the month of January. And so we will see them the lobby, and I will come back in February. I'm also going to be up doing uh, Father Comes Home for the Wars at American Repertory Theater, so that's going to be fun. We're going to be up there. But, yeah, I know. Can we do a road trip? I think I'm going to do Watch Me Work up there, too. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Anybody else? Anything? No? Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thanks a lot.